Yeah, or they're just habit based. Okay. But that's the that's one of the key differences with HTML5. You should know that. Okay? Semantic tags. HTML5 is semantic. Okay. So we're gonna look at the Star Wars. So inside I could do this all with JavaScript, right? Um, but for now let's I'm just gonna start with the select tag. So we're gonna make select. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a dud option tag right off the bat. Again, I could also do this with JavaScript, but it's a little bit faster here and a little bit less redundant. Um, and I'm gonna write select a character inside of here. And we will look at this page, Let's refresh, and we have select a character. Cool. Let's hook up our index.js. How do I do that? Script tag. What would I use a link tag for? <laughs> CSS. That's right. For a style sheet. Uh, so dot slash index.js. You also need to script for Axios. Okay, so Kong says we need the script for the Axios. Great idea. Let's go find that. Oh, this is pretty convenient. We happen to have the Axios documentation right here with the script tag highlighted. Uh, remember, npm install Axios, I know I led us astray a little bit yesterday. Um, that is only for Axios in the back end. So if it's being accessed via the browser, like this one, with, through an HTML, then we're going to go ahead and use the script tag. Okay, there will be a time when we'll only be writing backend code <coughs> next season, right, when we're doing Express and servers. That's when we'll be using npm install access. Okay, so let's go forward into our HTML and add that script tag. Should I do it before or after? Before. Let's do it before, yeah. Right, because we want to use Axios, so it already has to exist in the space. Code reads what direction? Top to bottom, right? Excellent. Uh, okay, so what's the first thing I want to do? Sorry? Check to make sure they're linked. Yes! Excellent, Danielle. Right, we got to make sure, otherwise we might waste our time for a little while checking. Ah, it's like, let me just flip this around. Okay. Let's refresh. Hello, whoa, 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 all right. So I'm going to want to do something to the select. So select has to exist on my page for me to do something with it. So what do I need to wait? What do I need to do? Sorry? For the content to load? Yeah, I gotta wait for the content to load. Excellent. I know sometimes I sound like a broken record up here, but it's important that you get it drilled in. Document dot add event listener. Dom con that's gonna be a surprise. Tense <laughs> loaded. What is that annoying box? Dom content loaded. I can't believe it. Uh so Dom Unbelievable. Add event listener takes in an event and a callback, right? So the definition of a callback is what? Sort of. It's actually the function that is the argument, right? The function that takes in a function is the high order function, okay? This is the callback. This part that's being highlighted is a function being used pass through as an argument. Very, very close. I like it. Uh, okay, let's test to make sure that's hooked up. So we'll slip hello in there. Slide over. Refresh. Show me the money. We got it. All right, so let's keep rocking and rolling. Um, let me clear this so I can look at my notes a bit too. Okay, so let's come up with like an approach, a list of what we want to do. What's the first thing we got to do? We got to use the API 
To do what? Yeah, specifically what type of JSON? What, what's going what's gonna to be in our JSON? Yeah, okay. So use API to get characters. Once I have the characters, what's our next step? Okay, right, we're going to create option tag the name of the character. Uh, so, create options. Always good to have options, right? Create options with character name. Then what are we going to do? Let's just plan out the app. Someone I haven't heard. Sam, what are we going to do after we've created our options? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure? Okay. That's all right. Tom, huh. what are we going to do? We're going to push to the HTML. We're going to link to the HTML of the normal. Okay. So create options with characters. Uh, add to select. Yep. What's the next? And then what's the next conceptual step? Uh, okay, Brutus. We want um, when the character is selected to actually uh, have the information about the name of the person. Okay, so how will we know when a character is selected? Karen? 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 Okay, excellent. Excellent teamwork, right? Uh, add listener to select. What should we listen for? Change. Change, I like that. Once we know which character, what are we going to do? No okay, and then so, and how will we get their homeland information? Great, so then we're going to have to fetch homeland. Okay, fetch homeland. Decent, a uh, couple seasons of that show. Fetch homeland uh, of character. Is homeland still on? Does anybody watch it still? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just good. Claire Dane's such a good actress. Anyway, uh, she's a beast, is that what you said? Oh, yeah, she's phenomenal. Okay, uh, if you haven't seen the first season, you should see it after the uh, program. Uh, okay, so, so let's do this. Use API to get characters. So let's go ahead and write a function that's going to help us called get characters. So let's just start knocking them off one at a time. So we'll say const get characters. What kind of, what should I do? Brandon. Hey, so Brandon, if I put async in front of this, what does get characters return? Well, it's okay. Think of a. That's all right, Danny. Yeah, it's going to return a promise, right? That's what we. That's all we need to. That's all I want us to take away, right? If we use async before a function, it returns a promise. bingo, bingo, bango, right? That's a promise. Um, let's try to keep it. So if I say try, what should we be thinking about? Oh, try catch, right? This because if we're going to be using async await, uh, we're going to want to use try catch. Async, a function with async in front of it returns a promise. promise. Nice. All right, sing it. Sing it from the rooftops. Sing it to your significant other tonight. Um, my wife knows so many code catchphrases. 
Uh, not what they mean, just that she's heard them a lot. Uh, okay, try. So I'm just going to start writing with try, catch. Catch takes in an error, uh, which I'll just abbreviate to error. And I could do something with this error if I wanted to. Uh, I'll just have a debugger if we throw an error. And I'll log the error short too. Right, this isn't necessarily best practice, like leave a debugger in there. But I just want you to know that like, I want to make sure we can like see the air. It's going to totally screw up our code. Excuse me, I have a little bit of a burp. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> if you're embarrassed about selling, just embrace it, you know? Uh, okay, so let's go take a look at the API to figure out how we can go ahead and get some characters. So it's pretty convenient that the API is right here. And if we look through the documentation, We'll eventually see this people. And it looks like pretty good data here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab HTTPS. And I'm just going to end it at people. I'm going to, I think the next page probably has something to do with page one. But the first person should be Luke Skywalker. Okay. So let's go ahead and fetch this. So I'm going to say let res and I'm going to write axios.get and in my quotes I'm going to say people. Am I doing this right? Hmm. Danny says no. Wait, oh wait, what did I do? What? <laughs> wait, we got to use a wait. If we want to have our asynchronous code run in a bit more of a synchronous matter within an asynchronous function, or a promise function here, we need to use the hot, hot word await. So we're going to say await. Excellent. And let's go ahead and throw a debugger in here to make sure we're getting the response that we desire. Okay, we'll go here. We'll refresh the page. It's clicking a. We never call the function. Right? Brutal. We could have been waiting here literally all day uh, and nothing would have happened. So we'll say get characters at the bottom there. We'll go back, refresh. Yes. Let's take a look. We're in the right debugger, right? Didn't throw an error. So that's the good news. Uh, let's take a let's enlarge that. Let's take a look at our res. Ooh, status 200. Marvin, I know you were worried about that. It does show that. Uh, and then the, the data that we want back where we used to say like res.json, we do that by saying res.data. And it looks like I have this results array too. So I could say res.data.results. See, I can play around with it right here. I can key around in my object so I know exactly what's right in my code. And I look and I see, ooh, Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, R2D, right, R2D2, Darth Vader. Uh, oh man, there's no Chewbacca. You know, uh, uh, and we can learn a little bit more. Let's see what else we have on here. When we look at Luke Skywalker, we have their birth year. Interesting number scheme. We have when they were created, edited, eye color. That's really cool. I have Luke Skywalker's eyes. Everyone tells me that. Um, we, uh, oh, I have Luke Skywalker's gender. Uh, I don't have his hair. Uh, I don't know that height. Honestly, I can't do the math that quick. Um, six feet. Uh, six feet two? Really? Okay, I, have, I am. I am Luke Skywalker. Uh, uh, no, someone's like no. Uh, okay, and then I think it has Homeworld in there. All right, so we've got this Homeworld, and we can be like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let's let's take a look at what this gives us. I could go and make a fetch request in uh, Postman right now. It's a really good practice. Um, I'm just going to kind of take a quick shortcut because I know it's just a get statement. So I'm just going to paste it in to here. 
as a new tab and I can look at okay we've got it's Tatooine 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 um, I call it Tats. Uh, that's what we all call it. Anyway, so I'm from Tats, and we can see that my climate is arid. So gravity is one standard. Okay, so that so these are like this is the information that I need. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's continue. So let's go ahead, and we know we've got res data dot results, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make my variable called let characters, and that's going to equal res .data results. We got the characters. Now we've got to create options with each character and add it to the select. So what's that sound like we need? We've got to grab the select, Deja says. Uh, no problemo. Let's go ahead and grab it. I'm going to grab it at the top because I know I'm going to need it later to add an event listener. So I'm going to do it outside to get it within like the outside scope there. So I'm going to say let select, and I know I'm only dealing with one select. Yeah. Um, before we start, like, did you want to put those um, values in a like the array? Uh, well, we've got them in an array. Okay. Okay. I okay. think we're going to be able to make okay. the options as we go. That's a good question. Okay, so we'll say select. How do I grab it? Document.query selector. And we will say select. What a cool sounding word. Um, okay, and so now we've got our select. So we have access to that. And let's go ahead and iterate through our characters. What seems like a good loop for that? For each. For each, right? Remember, if you can use for each, like if you because I'm not going to break out of it, right? For each, I can't break out, and so, but I don't want to because I want to go through all the characters. For each is a good choice because you don't have to worry about is it less than or equal to length or less than length or where I starts. So you just are going to access every element. I also don't have to go like array at zero at name. Instead I can just say character at name. So it's going to be a lot more attractive to use. So let's go ahead and say characters dot for each and I'm going to say character. And this takes in a callback function, right? Character is what get passed in. And we have to create an option tag. How do we create that? Let option document dot create element. Deja, keep going. Pass in the string option as the argument. Okay, great. And so our option tag, what should it have? What things do we need with it? Yeah, Maria. Yeah, so it's got to say the character's name, and that part of the option tag is going to be called what? Inner, inner text. Inner text. You've got the total right idea. Ashia. What's the difference between inner text and inner HTML? Great question. The question is, what's the difference between inner text and inner HTML? Vaughn? Um, inner text is just as it says, will read as a string as a text. Inner HTML is actually the HTML code that can be by the browser. So for like this, it's inner text because it's just going to be a word. But if you were like appending to say a div, you may not actually add HTML. Exactly. So to, to paraphrase again, right? In our HTML, we can write a string with actual HTML elements. So I can do like a string of H of the angle bracket H1, the text closing H1. And then that will be interpreted as the browser as an H1 tag with that text. Inner text, just the text. Okay, excellent answer. Uh, okay, so we're going to say option dot what? Inner text for this one. And we can say character 
dot what? Dot name, right? So I'm debating what's the next thing I want to go to. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and add this option. So we will say, um, how do I add a child? Pen child and then the option. Excellent. And let's see if that's working. Uh, maybe it's slow. Okay, great. We got it. Uh, I'm still able to select select the character. Mm, don't like that. Kong, I know you looked this one up, man. Yeah, so Perfect. So Kong says, if I don't want to be able to select that, but I want it to start as selected, I can go to my HTML and say selected, and I can say disabled, because I do not want to be able to select this. Danny. Yes. Uh, I think it, you probably just have to do like select it, the property selected pointing to true or something. I, I, we, we'd have to look it up to know the exact syntax, but you definitely can. And I think I've done it, it's just a little hazy. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Let's make sure that that's working the way we want. Uh, it's my, oh, perfect, right? Now it is. Disabled, we can't grab it. So I can click on something else, but I can't go to that. That's great. Um, okay, so we said we were going to add an event listener to our select for the on change. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that after get characters, and I'm going to say select dot add event listener. Now what am I going to listen for? Change. Ch -ch -ch change. Uh, change. And this is going to create an event. Fire this callback. Do I care about the argument inside? Do I want to pass an event? In? Who says yes? Who says no? All right. Everyone's got, people have got opinions. Let's talk about it. Defend your point. And the event? <coughs> Why? Okay, so we're kind of there. We're saying some words. Uh, <laughs> with, with, they're good words, but they're not quite an explanation yet. Let's keep going. Marvin. So he says, yeah, but how are we going to know what to do? Jay? Um, you would want the value um, that it changed to so that you could key into the home world of whatever that character is. So you're going to need to know what character in order to know if it's a big home world. Okay, so Jay says we're going to need it so we can see the value and see what the home world of that character is. Pretty compelling. Uh, so compelling that I'm going to add it in. And we can find out. Okay, so we're going to say event. And let's put in a debugger and see what we can learn, yeah? So we'll save this. Go back. Refresh our page. Click on R2D2. Check out the console. And we can look at our event. What are some common properties we look at when we're looking at event? Target and current target. Yeah, those are our main ones, right? When in doubt, check those out. Yeah, target and current target. It's the target. Uh, target. 
Target. Uh, French. Uh, okay, so we've got event.target. Mm, okay. You can say event.target.value. It's our 2D2. Hmm, is that going to help us? It could help us, but would it be better? With, what would be what would be the ideal? Like if we were just writing a dream application, what would what would we get when we do this? Okay. The, the index, maybe. What else could be the dream? Doug. The URL to fetch. The URL to fetch. Yeah, that sounds pretty dreamy, right? Let's make the dream a reality. All right, so we can do event.target. How do we do this? Here we go. So we'll go back up to where we're setting our option tags. After assigning the inner text, no problem. Let's assign another value. Let's say option. Yikes, I'm sorry about that. Option.value. Let's assign it to character. Dot uh, home world, I think it is, right? Yeah. Let's see what would happen now, yeah? Go back. Refresh the page. Select our character whenever this page actually goes on and fetches our characters. Let's take a look at Luki. Uh, we got our event. Event. Dot target. Dot value. Undefined, that's too bad. That's weird. Oh, because for you put character, you don't type in option that value. Did I? Ah, right? Characters is referring to what? The array, right? The array of all of the characters. Let's refresh. I'm so sorry if I'm super anticlimactic, but that is programming, right? You try something and then you try it again. This time, huzzah, right? This is what we want. This is the URL, this is the dream, we're living the dream. So if we know we can get that, let's go fetch that character's setup, right? Let's go fetch this. So back in our event, we can just fire in a, a function called like, get home world that takes in the event dot target dot value right let's go write that function now. so we always want to set up code to be able to write it as if we were writing our dream right so we'll say cons um, Get home world. What do I want to add here? Anything? Should I do anything special? Async. Hey Brandon, if I put async here, what's this going? What's get home world going to return? Perfect. Right. Okay. If if async is in front of the function, it will return a promise. This takes in a URL. Um, if I'm thinking about async await, what should I be also trying to think about? Try catch, right? See what we did there? Yeah, let's try it. Try, and then if anything goes down, let's catch it. And we'll say error, and I'm just going to console log that error. I'm not really too, too hot and bothered about it at the moment, but it's important to have it. And if anyone ever asks you about error handling, you should tell them that you can use a try catch block. Okay, there are, there have been occurrences where people have been asked that. I think, well, I don't know. They did not get those jobs, but they did know. We did like, so make sure you know when the time comes. Uh, okay, try catch. Um, let's go ahead and make an Axios call for this URL. So let's go ahead and set a response. And how should I wait for this to happen? Away axios.get URL. Let's 
put a debugger in there, and figure out what our data looks like. Yeah. So we're going to refresh our page yet again. Oh, God. This API is pretty slow. Um, I don't, does that R2D2? Okay, and we can look at what our response is here. So we'll say res. Interesting. Let's go res.data. And we've got name and climate. Let's just go ahead and only print name and climate. Obviously, we could make a lot more things, right? But seems like we don't need to do that at the moment. So, okay. Well, let's just say we've got wet planet equal res dot data. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a section. So I'm going to say let section equal document dot. Maybe I should erase the section if there's already a section there, right? So let's actually go do a query selector for section. Okay, so this way, if there is a section, how can I remove it? Because every time I click on a new thing, I want it to be replaced. Repeat. Uh, I actually want to like delete the whole section if it's there. Hang on, somebody throw up their hand if they're feeling good. Anyone I haven't heard from yet? We've got some quiet people. Uh, I guess I, I, I have, Britt, yeah, let's do it. Remove child, okay. On uh, who, who am I gonna call it on? Who's the parent? How do I find that? Nice, so we're gonna say section dot parent node. Perfect, Britt. And we will say dot remove child, and we will pass it in section. All right, so I'm only going to do this if I have a section. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and create it. So I'll say section equals document dot create element section, and then Let's go ahead and also create an H1 to say the name. So instead of section here, I'm going to do H1. And we'll say H1 dot, what should, how do I make H1 say the name? Inner text, inner H1 dot, Inner text equals equals what? How do I get to say the name? A little bit louder, Kevin. Planet dot name, right? Don't forget, we already declared planet earlier. We still have it. Planet dot name. Uh, let's go ahead and make an H three or something. And we'll just make this about the climate. And let's go ahead and give that an inner text as well. So we'll say h3 dot inner text equals, and I'll just write climate plus, how do I get the climate? Yep, planet dot climate. Also, I know we've been doing it a lot. I want us to remind, just a reminder, we can still write it in block notation, right? Nothing wrong with writing like that. Totally cool still. Uh, okay, so we'll say planet there, and then we gotta do some appendings of children there. So we'll say document dot body. Dot Ten child, and we will say uh, section. 
and section dot append child and we should say h1 and we'll also have our section append r h3 and that's a lot of code to write in that function but c'est la vie uh, let's give it a shot shall we refresh our page select the character don't mind if I do whenever this finishes loading. It is a slow API. Uh, there are fa much faster APIs, and when you write your own, it will be lightning fast. And we say Alderaan something temperate. Uh, computer is slow. And had to, who, who, is, who is that? I can't see the name. Oh, oh and Laura. Oh, okay, that could be Luke Skywalker's cousin or something, right? Same planet. Uh, when, I find, when people find out I'm from Oregon, they always ask if I know someone. They're like, oh, do you know uh, Patrick? I'm like, no. There is a lot of people in Oregon. Uh, anyway, that is everything. Any questions on any of this? Yeah, Danny. Absolutely. So when we're using Axios for a front-end application, so front-end means the JavaScript is being run by the browser, right? As we can see, the script tag is from in the browser to our index.js. So it's really like Chrome that's running our JS. Then we need the script tag for Axios. When we are setting up a backend application, so this is for the server, this is when we write node, then we'll need to do npm install Axios. Great question. Anything else? Jay? Uh, could I have written everything in the first try? Well, um, let me see what you mean by that. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm sure if you got it to work, then there's definitely lots of ways to write it. Uh, any other questions? All right, great. So we're going to have pairs today.